blah. <laughs> so today's movie is called Fresh Hell. I met one of the filmmakers of this film at the Genre Blast Film Festival. We had a long drive back to New York. It was like a five-hour drive, and it was like 8.30 at night. I felt really bad walking out on this dude's screening, and I, I came up to him, and I was like, congratulations on your screening, and I'd love to see the movie. And we stayed in touch, and I just... And what better way to not only watch it, but support the movie by doing a little review here for the channel. It's available on Tubi. Redbox and a couple other platforms. What's it about? In 2020, everybody was doing those Zoom reunion sort of things where like maybe people you hadn't seen in a long time would all get together into a Zoom chat and just talk and hang out. And so the movie starts out with one of these. And what's weird, even two years removed, it feels like a time capsule. It's so invocative of that time. The more distance we have from 2020 and its events, the more it's going to feel encapsulated, like what I'm describing right now. We find out that they're all actors, and we learn a little bit about their backstories and interconnected relationships. Some in the circle are liked more than others, and things start to eventually get debaucherous. The alcohol starts flowing. Powdered goods make an appearance. One friend. It's seven friends. One friend is missing. Their friend Laura or Lauren? Laura. It was definitely Laura. She's absent from the reunion. No real reason is given why. Eventually she does pop on, but instead of Laura being there, there is this random bearded dude, and that's where everything starts to get really gnarly. Something really bad might have happened to Laura, and this bearded dude starts being all freaky deaky. He seems omnipotent. He's able to drink beers that are only local to the area of where their friend is. Or, or how about hitting the same exact colored e-pen? Nothing is making sense. There has to be a logical explanation here. And then the big scene happens. It's pretty much the last thing that anyone would expect to happen during any kind of quarantine Zoom reunion. The stranger dude with the beard cuts his own dick off and starts chewing on it. Kind of reminds you of that German cannibal dude who convinced the other dude to consensual cannibalism. And he's chewing on it like it's friggin' Bazooka Joe. Everybody's freaking out. And then we get a, a cut and some time passes and nobody's really sure what happened. The passage of time is marked by current events, real current events that are happening to kind of show us where we are in the year 2020. Grace is the only person who's really shook by everything that's happened. Everybody else is kind of like, eh, whatever, it's probably just a, a fake out. Deep fake. And as time passes one by one, people are getting bumped off until the only one left is Grace. Mind you, the ones who are doing the bumping off are these weird dog men. Kind of like that, you know, that dog fetish mask. I don't know much about that stuff. What is it, furries? It's some, there's some sort of Illuminati thing going on. The whole movie up to this point is presented through a Zoom screen. It's not something that we haven't seen before, but, you know, what Fresh Hell does really well is keep you engaged. It's very, very easy to lose focus when you're using a format like that. You're relying on characterization, dialogue, and pacing to keep everything moving. I didn't ask the filmmaker this when I spoke to him, but I have a feeling, I think this was made clearly during the pandemic, and it's just really creative creative, man. It's really creative. So anyway, last person standing happens to be Grace, and she goes and she meets with the stranger guy who's played by one of the directors. There's two directors. Ryan. Ryan. Dude's name is Ryan. And Matt is the other director. So Ryan, who plays the stranger who cut off his own wee-wee, he's all freshly shaven, and it sort of turns into a self-aware evil genius in his lair revealing his plan sort of vibe. Fresh Hell is very self-aware of this and even goes as far as to take note of it. I'm all for that, man. I did it in my own movie too, man. I love the big culmination explanation. The stranger guy, he basically reveals that he used to go to school with them and that he was never liked. It's kind of like a cask of Amontillado sort of situation 
the narrator who's been deeply insulted by Fortunato, but we don't know how intense those insults actually truly were. Kind of reminds me of that Will Keenan movie too, Chopped. And the movie from here kind of turns into almost like a one-man show where the director is just chewing the scenery. And he's magnetic, man. I mean, you really can't take your eyes off him as he goes through this performance. He also gradually reveals that him and Grace had once slept together, but Grace has no memory of this. And yes, of course, it turns out to be a Illuminati sort of situation. There's some mysterious app and everybody's watching it. And what we're in the middle of is like a performance piece, but it's also part of this app. And then you have the dog people. They're up in the the balcony. It gets very, very surreal, which I like. I like surreal stuff. The Stranger Guy, if I could best describe his performance, I notated that he's kind of like Bugs Bunny if he inhaled Frank Booth's nitrous from Blue Velvet. Overall, the film really gave me some Megan is Missing vibes, which I just spoke about with Nathan Ludwig, talking about how it's really one of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen. And this film kind of captures that energy, that unsettling energy, as we're wondering what happened to Laura initially. The highlight for the film has to be the Snapchat murder filter. The murders appear on the Zoom screen, and one of them shows their friend Todd being murdered, and Snapchat filters are masking to his face and flying they're flying through the filters. It's pretty fun. Definitely give this a whirl. It's interesting and unique. And frankly, I kind of want to know the story behind the story. Check it out now, streaming on Tubi and other platforms. Yowza! Ah!